All right, welcome to the sequences lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve sequence problems. And I think for a lot of students, these questions are kind of annoying because they don't really follow any hard and fast rules. Each one seems to be different than the other. Uh, a sequence, actually, let's just define a sequence first. It's just a series of numbers. Sometimes they repeat, and sometimes there's some kind of formula to find out the next one and the next one and the next one. So let's, let's do three examples here, and hopefully I'll, I'll help you out and show you some ways to solve these. So the first one we have is a repeating sequence, and this one says, the word rusted is written over and over to form an infinite sequence. What is the 127th letter of the sequence? So this thing gets written over and over and over again, and it just keeps going and going. So what you don't want to do is try and write this thing out over and over on test day. That would be a horrible idea, and it would take too long. You probably wouldn't do that anyway. So it's got to be a shortcut, right? And there is. So let me show you what you're going to do. So come test day, actually let me just move this up so we have some more room. Come test day, you're going to write the sequence once through. So we have rusted. Then you're going to number each spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we know we're always going to look at the last spot. That's the most important. So we know that the sixth position is a D. Let me ask you this. What do you think the twelfth one is going to be? And I, I can write it out. But 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, R-U-S-T-E-D. The twelfth one's going to be a D. Now what do you think the 18th position is going to be, or the 18th spot? I guarantee you, it's going to be a D. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that these, when you look at the last position, all of these spots are going to be multiples of six. So they're all going to be D's. And I'll write that here. They're all multiples of six. So why does that help us out? We want to find a multiple of six that's really close to 127. So maybe what some of you guys thought was that, well, if we know the twelfth spot and we know that's a D, then the 120th should also be a D. Okay? So if we go and you have to ask yourself, is 120 divisible by 6? And you can use a calculator. I don't have one on me now. I'm not going to show you. But yes, 120 is divisible by 6. So we know 120 is a multiple of 6. So we know because of that, it's going to be a D. So we're really close to 127. Let's add 6 more. If I go to the 126th spot, that should also be a D, right? So now if I'm at the 126th spot, and that's a D, what's the next letter? 127 is going to be an R, right? Because this thing just goes 128, U, 129, S, and so on and so forth. Okay, so really the whole point of this is that I kind of went through this a little, uh, you know, it took a little, I plotted through it, but I just want to show you and make sure you understand that you always look at the last number, and it's going to be multiples of that last number, and you want to find a multiple that's really close to the desired number, and you kind of count forward or backwards to that spot. Uh, real quick, if I gave you the word rusty, R-U-S-T-Y, you know, you would put one, two, three, four, five. And now you're looking, or you're, or you're trying to solve the problem in terms of fives, or multiples of five. Okay? So actually the 125th letter would be a Y. 126, 127. So it all depends on which, on which, on how many letters are in the word, and uh, what position it is. So we're just going to look at multiples of five if we had rusty. Okay. So that's one type. That's kind of how to handle when the, when the thing repeats over and over and over. Let's look at another one. Okay. This one says the first term in a sequence is x, and every term after is 2 less than twice the preceding term. If x is greater than 2, what is the ratio of the third term to the second term? And again, you can pause the video if you want to try it on your own. So when you get a sequence question like this, one of the best things you can do just put in your spots, or your slots, whatever you want to call them. So we'll do it algebraically first. First spot, they told us is x, right? And every term after is 2 less than twice the preceding. So to find this spot here, we have to multiply by 2, twice the preceding. So it's going to be 2x, and then is 2 less. 
So minus 2. We have to do that first. So we have to multiply first, and then we do the 2 less. So we found the second spot. If we want to find this spot, we got to go to the preceding one, or the preceding term. It's twice. So 2, I'll do the work right here. 2 times 2x minus 2. Okay. 4x minus 4. And then 2 less than that. Minus 2. So in the end, we get 4x minus 6. Sorry, they're a little small there. Hope it's not too small on the screen. So this spot should be 4x minus 6. Okay. So now when we do the ratio of the third term to the second, when we set up a ratio, it's just one thing over another. So that's going to be 4x minus 6 all over, that's the third term, all over the second term. Okay? And we're going to simplify that because, unfortunately, that's not one of the answers, right? If you look over to our answer choices here, we don't see 4x minus 6 over 2x minus 2. So we'll factor out a 2, and we get 2x minus 3 all over, or 2 times 2x minus 3 all over 2 times uh, x minus 1. The 2's cross out, and what do you know? We get 2x, let me just make that look like an x more. 2x minus 3 all over x minus 1, choice B. Now let's say you had no idea how to do that algebraically. What you could do is, and I'll try and make some space here, you put your slots in, and why don't you just pick numbers? All right, let me just move this over so you guys can see it. Um, so let's say the first number is 4. What would the second number be? Twice the preceding minus 2. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 2 is 6. Let's find this one. To get this spot, 2 times the preceding, 12, minus 2, 10. The ratio of the third to the second, 10 over 6, or 5 over 3, same thing. And, you know, you'd have to go through the choices and try and find it. You'd have to plug in 4, because that's what we picked for x. And I'll just save some time here. If you look at b, 2x minus 3 would have been 2 times 4, which is 8, minus 3, which would have been 5. What's on the bottom? x minus 1. We said the first thing, the x was 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. And they match up, right? So we got the right answer. So B, that's another way to do this problem. You could choose numbers if doing it algebraically was too difficult. All right, let's see if I have time to finish up with one last one. This, one, this one's actually a little bit easier than the two we just did, but it's another just practice one. Uh, it's kind of, you just got to kind of find the pattern. So this one says, the first term in the sequence above is 82, and each term after is determined by dividing the previous term by x and then adding y. What is the value of y? Okay, so we want to try and figure out, if I, how do I get from 82 to 42? Well, you could divide by 2, right? So 82 divided by 2 gives you 41. But I need to get the 42, right? So what am I going to add? I need to add 1. So maybe x we divide by x, so maybe x equals 2, and y is going to equal 1. Now, let's, we got to test it out, though. we got to make sure that works for the next one. So 42, with our numbers now, 42 divided by 2 gives us 21. And what do we do? We add 1. So we do get 22. So this thing seems to work. This, this pattern seems to work. So what is the value of y? The value of y is 1. All right, so those are three different types of sequence questions. I'll probably post some more vids in the future about uh, maybe doing some more difficult or different types of sequence questions. But uh, until then, uh, keep studying, and good luck on the SAT.